wrapping up with this snowfall today. 17 inches of snow so far at Mishawaka. That's just east of Red Feather Lakes up near where the fires are burning. So substantial snowfall in the high country and here across the Front Range. 14.2 inches for Fort Collins, 11 and a half for Loveland, 11 for Nederland and 10 for Boulder where we had reports of whiteout conditions at times today. Seven and a half for Longmont and five in Denver and the snow will keep coming tonight as we continue to see bands rolling across the Front Range and the Plains. So what this means when we talk about banding is that there are heavier pockets of snow coming down. So you might see a little light snow at times and then it, a burst of snow comes along and that's going to be the case in through tomorrow morning. We still have snow across the Eastern Plains as well up in the high country and down to the south toward Colorado Springs, Pueblo and Walsenburg and you can see that heavier snow moving off to the northeast. Winter storm warnings in effect through tomorrow morning and that includes the Denver area all the way across western Colorado. Winter weather advisory for about three to six inches of snowfall tonight for the eastern plains. So it's going to be a cold one only five degrees for an overnight low with that cold and that snow with those wind chill values below zero. We are going to be talking about when this storm actually moves out of the state coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Stacy. And now we want to get out to Grand County, where Denver 7's Lance Hernandez has been all weekend tracking the East Troublesome Fire. And Lance, this storm will definitely slow things down, but crews tell you do not expect the snow to completely put out this fire. Well, the snow is a mixed blessing for firefighters and evacuees. You know, it helps dampen the tinder dry fuels, but it also makes operating fire equipment much more of a challenge. And the cold temperatures accompanying this snow can freeze pipes, which is a big concern for evacuees. So today, the Grand County Sheriff organized a posse of volunteers to help deal with that concern. A convoy of authorized volunteers drove past this roadblock and onto Grand Lake today. Their goal, to winterize the mountain homes of as many evacuees as possible. Basically, it's just preventing those pipes from breaking, doing any type of quick, you know, 10 or 15 minute things that they can get in there when due and then get out. Grand County Sheriff Brett Schrotland says they're trying to keep the East troublesome disaster from multiplying. We don't know the fate of our property for sure. Homeowner Rod Archer told Denver 7 on Friday he was worried about two things, flames and freezing cold. If there is still a house there, I know the power is off. I know that it's going to be very cold on Sunday and if if I can't get there to winterize the house, the pipes are going to freeze. Which could cause a lot of damage. The sheriff says it's unsafe to let homeowners back in, but escorted volunteers touching base with the homeowners can help. Joe Kelly and his son Caleb volunteered. They see multiple benefits. We could start learning from today what areas could be safe to let people get back in and get other people in houses. It's definitely pretty cool to help out my community. Son of Caleb's friends lost homes. It's pretty devastating to me knowing like a bunch of my buddies' houses and stuff are gone and like their parents have to rebuild and stuff like that. But um, as long as everyone's safe, that's what really matters. More than a thousand homeowners have requested winterization help. The sheriff not sure if they can get to all of them. If we can save half that, then that's better than zero. And Sheriff Schrotland says his goal is to get all those evacuees back into their homes sooner rather than later. I asked if he was talking days or weeks. He said he didn't know yet. It depends on fire behavior. Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. All right, thanks, Lance. And this snow isn't just helping the East Troublesome Fire. Crews were able to make good progress on the Calwood Fire in Boulder County. It's now 76% contained, and at last check, it's burned through more than 10,000 acres. It's been a little less than a week since we opened our Denver 7 Gives Fund to help families impacted by these historic wildfires. Colorado, hundreds of you have responded by donating more than $81,000 to the fund so far. Tomorrow, we're making it even easier to donate, and we'll be hosting a call center from 4 to 6.30 in the afternoon. Our team will be standing by to take your call. You can also donate right now. Just head on over to the DenverChannel.com and click on Denver 7 Gives. And also on our website, you can find the latest on this storm, plus any closures and delays in place. During a usual snowstorm, schools across the state would be calling for snow days. But in this pandemic, some districts are now opting to keep the learning going and simply keep everyone online. That includes districts like Denver Public Schools, which is going 100% remote for all students tomorrow. You can also find details on closures on your Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, or Android device. There you can find our 24-7 weather forecast. Just search Denver 7 to start watching for free. 
And just a heads up, due to the cold weather, the state is keeping five COVID-19 testing sites closed tomorrow. That includes the sites at Waterworld, the Aurora Sports Park, and Stasio Ball Fields in Boulder County. There are still more than 50 free community testing sites that are available. To find the one closest to you, just visit the state's COVID-19 website. And as some testing sites close for the storm, coronavirus cases are rising sharply here in Colorado. We added another 1,500 new cases just today, but the total jumped by 109 more than that as state health staff added in numbers that were not properly reported this month. The number of hospital beds in use by COVID-19 patients or those suspected of having it stands at 586. That number is slightly down from yesterday and still below the peak of nearly 1300 that we saw near the start of the pandemic. And Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman is isolating after a positive coronavirus test. He says he had a cough and cold like symptoms on Thursday, so he went home. Kaufman says he no longer has symptoms. Aurora is part of both Adams and Arapahoe County.